Welcome back. We begin this morning's conversation in Southeast Nigeria, where the Council of Traditional Rulers and representatives of Igbo archbishops and bishops on peace and conflict resolution have demanded the immediate release of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, Namdi Kanu. The council's decision was contained in a statement issued yesterday and in line with the recent verdict of the appeal court concerning the IPOP leader. Recall that on October 13th, the Court of Appeal in Abuja had struck out the terrorism charge filed against Kanu, adding that the IPOB leader's extradition from Kenya to Nigeria to stand trial was illegal. According to the monarchs and the bishops, we welcome this judgment and assert that the wisdom of the appellate court presents a timely and unprecedented opportunity to overcome the challenge of trust that has obstructed the path to peace and opens the window to winning the hearts and minds of the people. We therefore unequivocally support the call uh, for the immediate release of Mazin Namdekanu in line with the unanimous judgment of the court that his extradition and subsequent trial was illegal and that the lower court has no jurisdiction to hear the case. However, the following verdict, Abubakar Malemi, Attorney General of the Federation, had said that the federal government would explore all available options to determine the charge preferred against Kanu. Now, this is an ongoing story that we've been talking about. Of course, uh, the major issue that was brought before the court was the fact that his extradition or his rather his rendition to Nigeria was illegal and uh, flagrantly flouted the extradition treaty that Nigeria has signed to. And of course, uh, the, judge, the, the lawyers for Namdi Kanu have said that they've received copies of the judgment and have presented same to the federal government and that the copy of the judgment says that they have no right to hold Namdi Kanu down. The question is, what next? Is the federal government going to then release Namdi Kanu? Because, you know, he's still held in custody by the DSS, the Igbo leaders, and different people have called for the release. Some, some people have even argued that a government that is subject to the rule of law should be able to obey the, the decision of the court. Uh, well, the, um, also, the, um, his lawyers did, you know, take um, the ruling of the appeal court, you know, to, his, um, to the DSS, you know, officer, I think two days ago, uh, to seek, you know, that they go ahead and follow those orders. But um, like Abubakar Malami has said, and of course, you know, the uh, Minister of Justice, he has also said that the ruling of the court, you know, does not, you know, override the, the cases that were preferred against him before his rendition. Um, and those are, you know, some of the reasons that he might still be held um, by the DSS. Um, I also I read, you know, in the last about 20 or 24 or 48 hours that he, um, he had mentioned that it, it's um, dependent on the uh, leaders of the Igbo, Igbo people that would determine whether he would be released or not, you know. And of course, the IPOB did then, you know, respond saying, you know, that there was a childish statement and just a lot of bad words. Um, but here's the thing, you know, and, and, and you know, for proper context, so Namdekano is the leader of a secessionist group called the IPOB um, that has, of course, uh, demanded their um, um, pullout from Nigeria for a long time. He was arrested in 2015 um, and, of course, you know, granted bail after a while. He did jump bail and then was rearrested again um, in 2021. Um, according to reports, he was rearrested in Kenya. Um, there's also people, and I'll just mention the different details here and there, there's also people who have said, that you know they may not necessarily be excited about you know Nandi Kanu's case or Nandi Kanu's story in the build up to the 2023 elections because you know it might change talking points in a way that they are not really interested in. Seven nobody wants to be distracted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, the whole of the Southeast. I don't think anybody wants to be distracted at this time. Um, while we're you know in the build up to the 2023 elections, there of course will be those who are maybe members of the IPOB or you know or fans you know and his followers you know that would like to see him. Um, um, set free, but you cannot argue that it would cause a distraction. If and what I'm, this, what I'm saying now is not enough reason to, of course, deny him his human rights or the rights to be released and to be set free. It really depends on whether the Nigerian government believes that you know the appeal court, you know, and its ruling is enough to you know cancel whatever charges that were preferred against him before he was rearrested. So they want to cancel the charges. What typically would be done? would be that they would restart the process, the but on a legal foundation, because legally there's something that's been said, I cannot put something or nothing and expect it to stand. So there is really no foundation and no basis, basis for this conversation in the first place. So going about it the right way would be the next, or should be the next point of call. But the question is, is that going to happen? 
is the federal government going to listen and maybe start again or would they then see it as a matter of national security because in some situations we see that they circumvent what is being said by the courts because they will say this is a matter of national security yeah so, so we, we will you know continue to follow follow the case you know like i said um, it will be a huge distraction, you know, um, between now and the next year uh, elections in 2023. Um, and of course, we're looking out for what Abubakar Malami, who is the Attorney General of the Federation here in Nigeria, would say um, and what the reactions would be, you know, from, you know, after, of course, his lawyers have approached the DSS um, office seeking his release. Um, like you've said, of course, we would see if, you know, they would restart the case on a proper foundation. And, you know, and to also in proper context, some of the things that he has been charged with are treasonable felony and, and um, whatnot.